All right. Um, welcome, everybody. Tonight is Tuesday, um, September 10th. It's about 7 o'clock. This is, tonight is a planning, zoning, public hearing, and general meeting. We are here in Town Hall in room 206. Um, we have a pretty straightforward agenda tonight. Um, after tonight's meeting, there's going to be a debate on television. I think a lot of us want to get home to it, so <laughs> be forewarned. You may get cut off if you talk too long. Um, our first item on the agenda, I'm going to read it into the record, but we're going to continue it. It's continuation of public hearing regarding Coastal Slate Plan Review number 233B as in boy, Fudge Dem Prevention Application number 261B, also known as PL24-87, Justin and Lindsay Vinci at 10 Nickerson Lane, proposed to construct and install a dock consisting of a fixed ramp pier and platform and perform related site development activities within regulated areas. The 0 0.9 acre, 0 0.98 acre, plus or minus acre subject property is located on the south side of Nickerson Lane, approximately 620 feet west of its intersection with Nearwater Lane, and is shown on assessor's map number 52 as lot number eight in the R01 zone. This, meet, this um, hearing is gonna be continued to um, October 1st, 2024. So if anybody's here in, in the um, audience or on TV watching, um, we're gonna continue that until the first um, date in October. Anything else to add on that? Yeah, one, uh, the uh, Environmental Protection Commission is wrapping things up with this application. So uh, like you said, Steve, this will be continued to uh, October 1st uh, in room 206 here in, in Town Hall. Fantastic. Okay, next item on the agenda is continuation of public hearing regarding business site plan application number 104 C's and Charlie, special permit application number 333A, flood stem prevention application number 439A, landfilling and regrading application number 55. 8A, also known as PL24-77, 1852 Darien 1 LLC, Cloud 10 Smart Car Wash at 54 Boston Post Road. The proposal is to redevelop the property, formerly occupied by Bartucci's Restaurant, as a new car wash, including a 5,150 plus or minus square foot building with bay, with bay wash. Eight, 34 exterior self-storage detailing spaces, five employee parking spaces, and perform related site found activities within a regulated area, including installation of stormwater management and on-site landscaping. The 2.13 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the south side of, of Boston Post Road at its intersection with West Norwalk Road, and is shown on assessor's map number 32 as lots number one and lot number two in the service business SB zone. The hearing opened on um, July 16, 2024. This I think is our third night on this application. Um, it's gone back and forth a couple times with regards to traffic and whatnot. Um, there might have been some, there's some few minor changes I think in the site plan today, but I'll let Fred or Jeremy introduce us, tell us what's the, um, primary changes to the application, what we have left to go over. Yeah, very good. Um, Steve, as you noted, the application was opened on July 16th by the commission and continued to tonight. Um, this is actually the second public hearing night uh, for this application. Uh, there were a number of items carried over from July 16th, and I'm just going to review those very quickly for the commission. Um, one was to revise the site plan to widen the proposed exit lane on the site drive to 18 feet. The next was to revise the site plan to include a note regarding relocation of the existing bus stop to the east side of the site access drive. The third item was to revise the site plan to show the TD Bank driveway on the north side of Post Road. The fourth item was to obtain a sign-off from Hardesty and Hanover relative to the revised site plan incorporating the 18-foot wide exit lane. Number five, confirm that the Connecticut DOT takes no exceptions to the revised site plan depicting the 18-foot wide exit lane. 
Six, obtain comments on the application from the Legal Traffic Authority. Seven, confirm impact on queuing of vehicles due to the shift in the curb cut. Eight, prepare a turning exhibit showing garbage truck access to the proposed dumpster. And nine, confirm that the architectural plans dated <coughs> April 7th are identical to those approved by the ARB on November 14th, 2023 in connection with the previous, previous application for the car wash which was withdrawn by the applicant. Uh, the applicant has submitted revised plans uh, for the commission's consideration. Those include a front load garbage truck turning exhibit, as I previously mentioned, dated August 20th. Revised civil engineering plan set, revised September 3rd. And a revised landscape plan, revised September 22nd. Um, in your packets, you'll also note a August 7th letter from the Darien Chamber of Commerce endorsing the project. There's an April, uh, I'm sorry, an August 13th final peer review letter from Joe Canis of Tie and Bond, who endorses the project. He notes that the application represents a substantial stormwater improvement over existing conditions. There's an April 23rd email from Connecticut DOT confirming that the department takes no exception to the wider egress to allow bypass or right turning vehicles subject to detailed review through the encroachment permit process. There's an August 26th letter from Bruce Beinfield, the applicant's um, architecture firm confirming no changes in architectural plans from the applicant's November 14th, 2023 meeting with the ARB. There's an August 27th final peer review letter from Greg Del Rio of Hardesty and Hanover endorsing the project and noting that all of its outstanding comments have been addressed. There is an August 29th letter from Arcadis to Ed Gentile noting sufficient sanitary sewer capacity for the project. A September 3rd, uh, the applicant met with the sewer commission on September 3rd. Uh, the commission approved the connection of the car wash to the sewer system on that night. Uh, there's a September 3rd letter from the Legal <coughs> Traffic Authority endorsing the project. Uh, let's see, we also have a September 4th letter from the Darien Land Trust also endorsing the project. Several of their suggestions were incorporated by the applicant, applicant into a revised landscape plan. And then lastly, we have a September 10th email from Connecticut DOT that email was received today from the applicant, noting the proposed relocation of the bus stop north towards the existing signal, signalized crossing is acceptable. Uh, so tonight we have Jay Klein and, of Carmody Law and his team here to uh, present these updates to the commission and answer any remaining outstanding questions that you have. I think the, um, the letter from the land trust, I think it was not the letter from the Chamber of Commerce. No, there were two well, separate. The land trust came in within the past day or so. Okay, I didn't see the land trust one. That's fine. Okay, great. Um, welcome, Jay. Thanks. Good evening, everyone. Jay Klein of Carmody, Torrance, Sandak, and Hennessy here for uh, the applicant and the good news uh, for, for brevity. Uh, I was planning on speaking for 15 minutes. Fred covered probably 10 of it. So. Uh, I would ask that you just give us an opportunity to tie up some loose ends, and then when I'm done, our team is happy to follow up on anything that you may be curious to hear more about. Uh, as Fred mentioned, you gave us a to-do list of, of eight or nine items, and we've checked through that list, I think, quite successfully, notably getting support from Tigan Bond, the LTA, Hardesty, and Hanover, and, and other uh, uh, interested parties in town. Dan, why don't we pull up the revised site plan that Fred mentioned uh, a moment ago. And I think this change, uh, the, the, the widening of the exit lane to 18 feet, was first recommended by uh, Greg Del Rio and his team at Hardesty and Hanover. We've incorporated <coughs> that into the site plan uh, that was filed uh, last week. 
um, and that has been well received by all independent tra traffic authorities that have reviewed this application. As Fred mentioned, uh, the, the breaking news on this project, I think it might have been Mr. Netter, or I, forgive me, I, I think it was you who would mentioned the bus stop last meeting, and uh, we were surprised and pleasantly surprised to get an email from DOT saying that's a great idea, let's relocate the bus stop uh, towards the intersection of the exit 13 off-ramp and the Boston Post Road. Um, that's just an approximate location of, of where it'll be. Safer for pedestrians, they have that crosswalk, they have the light there. It's, it's <coughs> ideal for everyone and glad that we can see that progress before we even put a, a shovel in the ground at 54 Boston Post Road. Um, well, we're you know, happy to have received all of these endorsements, all these approvals. Uh, it's been a busy summer for our crew. Ultimately, what your decision is guided by is the special permit criteria in the zoning regulations. And we submit and we feel quite strongly that the evidence in the record before you demonstrates that this proposal, if it doesn't meet the standards, it exceeds the standards. Uh, the first standard in the regulations uh, addresses whether the property is the right size for this use. As you can see on the site plan, this is a little over two acres of property. Uh, it's a deep parcel that allows us to put the building far away from the post road. It provides ample queuing capacity on the site so that there won't be spillover into the Boston uh, post road. The use of this property as a car wash is consistent with other auto and commercial uses and it's worth remembering that this is the SB zone, right? It's not downtown Darien. It's, it's the service business district intended to allow for businesses that serve a community need or a convenience. Certainly a car wash fits that bill and the approval of this car wash won't hinder the ability of any neighboring property to meet the needs uh, or purposes of the SB zone. Our hours of operation, 7 a.m. to 9 p.m., in line with other uses, uh, both on the north and south side of the Boston Post Road. Um, and it's also important that, to remember that being located on the south side of the Boston Post Road, we're not next to any single family home. We're not adjacent to any neighborhood. This is, this is a business street on the other side of the 50-foot wide Boston Post Road and then about 100 feet deep of commercial uses on the other side of the post road. I think, uh, as, as Fred mentioned and others, the support from the Darien Chamber of Commerce is meaningful in this regard too. Uh, recognizing, uh, supporting this project, not just because it's, uh, they think, uh, terrific to see a new building replace the Bertucci's building, uh, the nice site landscaping, but also the fact that we are welcoming a locally owned, locally operated business to town. And there's a difference when you have that, right? A locally owned shop versus a national chain. There's someone uh, that you can either knock on their door or, or, or call, their, call their number and uh, uh, they'll reply to you or they'll hear from me at Palmer's or, or somewhere else around town. The building design and size and compliance with the site plan standards. Uh, again, I think our narrative does a really detailed job of running through this, but some key takeaways. The building itself is a lot smaller than what you're allowed to build in the SB zone, right? Uh, you're allowed to build a building that covers 20% of your property in the SB zone. This building only covers 6% of the building. Permitted building coverage, I think it's 75 or 80%, somewhere around there. We're around 55% total impervious coverage. Significantly uh, less intense development than what you're allowed. <coughs> Not only are we underdeveloped when you look at coverage, uh, but it's worth remembering that this building is set back you look at the site plan here, 130 feet from the Boston Post Road. That's 100 feet more than what's required in the zoning regulations. The vacuums that are also featured on the site are set back 60 feet from Boston Post Road. And these aren't loud vacuums, and there won't be a situation where, you, you know, all, all of them are turned on at, at any one time at the same time. Um, but there's uh, this ample setback combined with the width of the post road and the width of the commercial uses on the north side ensure that there'll never be any adverse noise impact from these vacuums. We've spent a lot of time talking about traffic impact and I think the only thing that I can say left about traffic is that there have been several traffic authorities that have reviewed this and each and every one has endorsed the project. That may be because converting the property from a restaurant to a car wash is a commercial benefit. That may be because reducing the number of curb cuts on the property from two to one is a benefit. It may be because we were willing to reach out to the DOT and get that bus stop uh, relocated. That's a benefit. Uh, or it might be because the Cloud 10 team has committed to relocating their curb cut, align it with West Norwalk Road as we originally proposed, if the DOT ever decides to approve uh, a, a traffic signal for, for that intersection. 
And lastly, uh, I do want to emphasize the, the environmental uh, facet and the sustainability. That is a standard of the special permit criteria. Uh, it's a significant enhancement when you look at this from an environmental and conservation perspective. When you talk about limiting building coverage and site coverage, that's an environmental uh, benefit. When you talk about preserving meaningful, uh, 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 well-established trees on the Boston Post Road streetscape, that's an environmental uh, benefit. I don't think Chloe Sevigny knows about the trees we're proposing <coughs> here, but that's, that's okay. <laughs> we'll, we'll, well, we're still doing our part. Uh, and I think the support from the Darien Land Trust uh, uh, really speaks to not just the team that we've assembled, but the applicant that we're working for. Um, not every developer or property owner is willing to sit with uh, uh, neighbors or, or, or uh, interested parties and make modifications and, and have those tough conversations. But we had several conversations with the land trust and I think their letter recognizing the changes that we made, adding some more native species uh, to, to our proposed uh, uh, planting plan, uh, adding some uh, improved New England seed mixes and plant materials, inc incorporating micro clover to the seed blend. Um, uh, all of these changes were, were appreciated by the land trust and, and result in a better project. And I think there are comments uh, where they say, and I'm just going to read from the letter uh, directly, uh, they applaud the development team for prioritizing the environment and thereby setting the bar higher for other developers in town. I think that speaks pretty highly of, of, this, of this group and what we've been able to accomplish. There's, in my review of the record and preparing for tonight, and that's why I'm able to, I think, be so brief, there's no evidence in the record that would show that the special permit criteria are not satisfied here. Uh, I, we've satisfied our, our burden and have put forward a project that will benefit the town. Uh, from a traffic perspective, supporting local businesses, improving the environment, uh, we will see progress on all of these issues if you approve this project. And I think it, for that reason, it's an opportunity to realize really important and meaningful progress when it comes to redevelopment in town. Um, not an opportunity that comes with every application or proposal or use or applicant, but they're all available here with your approval of this application. So we're happy to answer any questions that, that you may have. Uh, a couple of quick items. I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You said the vacuums were 60 feet from the property? Yeah, uh, from the edge of the post road. Yeah, yeah I, I think it's closer to 50. Um, if, you look, if you look at the plan, it's 24 foot width. So this, Brian, if, if you want to correct me, there's a 24 foot, and then this dimension, this planted buffer, I want to say is another 30 some odd feet here. Yeah, we, was it for, 60? For, for, for the record, Brian McMahon, uh, Redison, we, uh, we did, at Jay's request, measure it yesterday in-house. It is 60 feet to the edge of the road okay. and 55 to the property line, plus or Okay, got it, okay. Um, what else? Um, I've got a couple. Of, I've got a couple of questions on on various things with regards to the vacuums. Um, you know, you said they're not all, all at the same time. I don't know. I'm not a a, um, a car wash guy, but my understanding is that there's one central plant that gets turned on that turns on the, the all the whole string of vacuums. Is that the case? I mean, I don't know if there's somebody else on your team that knows the answer to that. Good evening, everyone. Steve Sauce, Cloud 10. Mr. Olveda, yes, you're correct. The two enclosures, which are shown on the north end of the property, house the vacuum producers. These are solid built walls. These are engineered vacuums. They will be on. We deploy transducers, which is like automatic cruise control. If one person's using the vacuums, power is low. It'll ramp up as more users pull and use them. The noise is mitigated between the walls in the engineering of the vacuums, where they're using, they're beyond Dyson. They're quiet, they're powerful, you're really not gonna hear them. So the design is to keep the noise inside the property. So is there two sets of vacuums or one set? There's two sets of vacuums, one that it's this side and one that's this side, you have twin producers. Okay, so there's two different sets, so one's got you know, there's 34 total, right? Correct. So one's got, you know, 12, one's got 20, and one's got 14. Something Correct, like that. and they're engineered for each side. The motor sizes will be different. The number of manifolds inside are different because they're designed and engineered for the number of users. 
Okay. So when 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 no one's using the vacuums at all, the machines are on or they're on they're on, but they're very low, very low hertz, very low power. Do we have a sound report on those at all? We may not hear. We do have an acoustical report from other locations we've passed with flying colors in the okay. past. These are engineered vacuum systems. They're not what well, you've seen at other car washes in the market. They're not standing outside. We don't like them out in the open. Right, no, because the, the, the biggest complaint that I got was um, at one of your competitors, Splash, you can hear their vacuums all day long. Okay. And that's that's the complaint. Yeah, you're on the opposite side of the street, but it's it's you have two of these things that are humongous versus small ones at the other place. Yeah, I and I can appreciate that. We see that. That's why we take pride in, first off, in closing them and, two, buying engineered systems. That Do you need all 34 of those? I'm sorry? Do you need all 34 of those? Do we need all these spaces? I mean, no, no, no. The, I, I get you need the detailing spaces. Do you need all 34 vacuums? Yes, the customers will demand that if they pull in. Okay. Absolutely. Nobody doesn't want something else that someone has when they're there. So it's to people go, some people just go to wash their windows and everyone uses, if they're going to pump one of the detailing spots, they're going to use the vacuums. You're saying. Generally, yes. Okay. okay. Um, and then the other item is um, in terms of hours of operation, when are the lights turned on and when are the lights turned off? So if I can answer security lighting, security lighting will be on from uh, dusk to dawn. And that's generally required in all buildings. Uh, we want our staff to be safe, especially with the depth of the property in the rear. The lighting that won't face Route 1 or Boston Road uh, will obviously be on, but all of the site lighting that's required will be on. The rest of the lighting we generally turn on. It depends on the season, time of year stuff. would go on about 30 minutes before staff arrives, and we'll dim out about 30 minutes after they leave. Right, but that's, that's 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm not really worried about 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm more worried about 10 o'clock at night. Yep. I mean, when we looked at the BMW application, uh, which was also put forth by Carmody, we made sure those lights were off at night, um, and always certain lights were on. So I'm trying to figure out what, what the plan is for your lights after the 9 o'clock closing hour. So we've generally dimmed where required. We are near an airport at another location in Pennsylvania. Say that again? We are near an airport, an airport okay. at another location in Pennsylvania, and we dim the lights down to 20, 22% of their output just to bring them low. You can still see the property after hours, but they're low enough that they don't impact the, uh, the neighboring airport. The lights on the building or the lights in the parking lot, or both? Both. Do you need the lights on the parking lot on? Um, again, hours? so in my history of, of being and doing this for more than three decades. We're more than 100 feet back from the road. It's dark. We don't block our access point for emergency reasons. There's going to be people on the property. This other building's already been broken into a handful of times. We Please. usually have lights so that if somebody's driving by, police officers, they can see that somebody that may not be there is there, and they're going to pull in and say something to them. If it's dark, it's dark. Because we have other, like, H&L's <coughs> um, Chevrolet is also on the post road. Yep. Similar situation. Uh, where the lights are off. When they run a secure there. lot, is that not correct? Are they fenced in? Well, they have dog, they have a dog that bites people, they still get oh. cars stolen though. I'm, unfortunately, we're not fenced in. <laughs> We'd love to put a dog there, but yeah. it's going to be more of a roby puppy. <laughs> okay. So, um, we'll bring Bear and Calvin over. <clears throat> got it. Um, Any other questions for me? Right, I think we're good for now. I want to let right. open it up to the other guys. The guys we're going to thank speak you. to most, thank you, is going to be Hardesty and Hanover um, to get those guys' final take on this and maybe a couple other items. But do you have any initial questions at all? No, I think they did a great job. No, I'm good. All right, they're on. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, Greg Del Rio. <coughs> <coughs> Greg Del Rio, professional engineer, state of Connecticut, uh, department head for traffic engineering at Hardesty and Hanover. Welcome, sir. Welcome. So you sent us a letter, uh, <coughs> a final letter on it, saying that you have you have no more comments. So That's you get correct. To tell us you have no more comments. Um, 
Is there a delay site plan or, or all, all the comments are acceptable and addressed in, in your in, our, in their, their your last comments? So is this thing going to work? Yeah, I think it's going to work. You think it's, it's gonna going to work? You it's know going it's gonna to work. work. <laughs> all right. Yeah, I don't have any concerns. We used, we used to hold Michael Galante, his first kid, hostage. <laughs> And his first kid, Michael, is, is a client now, or was a client. Um, so what changed from, from the initial, and, and just if you can just go over that one more time, because I know they moved a couple items around and did some things that you did. Um, and, and any change in your mind that could ever happen with this traffic signal? Um, well, I, I mean, it's sort of like a, a safety, right? If if things aren't working, or if there is a safety, or if there's you know excessive queuing and operational problems, <coughs> then the DOT has basically said we'll relook at it and, and and do something to mitigate that condition. So we have the original traffic study that says it operates well with the signal, and now we have a new traffic study that says it works well without the signal. I think it's more of a safety concern, if anything, than, than a operational or queuing. That seems to be okay. I've done quite a few drive-bys and, and sat there for a few minutes and watched. I, I would say the majority of the time, and really it comes down to Saturdays. Um, I just stopped there today at 520. I had no problem going in and out. The signal controls gaps, right, from the, from the, wet, uh, from the east. Which, which um, signal, the one at the, at at the exit? Yeah, okay. right there. So traffic coming from the east has got some nice gaps, so you can concentrate on looking at you know the vehicles approaching from the left. When you know you have a gap, you look to the right, light's red, it's got a nice gap. You can come out, Norwalk right now during the afternoon, no queues whatsoever. I think two or three queues at, like I said, 520, 530, right in the you know, peak. In the morning, it's a little bit of a different story. Uh, for, for, for Norwalk itself, but yeah, I, I, I don't see any issues. It's comparable to every other curb cut on Boston Post Road. Great. Okay. Um, at the end of, at the end, and this is going to be a question for the applicant too, at the end of the police, the, the police department's letter, which is the legal traffic authority, um, they say that, that the LTAC is no issue with not having the traffic intersection. Should the Connecticut DOT rule that a single be installed sometime in the future, Caltech indicate they would be willing to align the traffic at the intersection. All right. The question for you guys is will you or will you not? Will we realign if there's a. Yes, we will do that. And so you'll install the traffic signal? We, well, we, the DOT would install the traffic signal but we'll realign our curb cut we, we move our curb cut from this location to line it up with West Norwalk Road to optimize the signal that's ever installed and it, that's something that you can make if you want to choose to make that as a condition of that's our big yeah, condition that's fine so so when when the DOT and I, it goes back when the DOT decides that a traffic signal is needed when they decide to need they pay for it yes they would pay for okay. it. And, and in, in our this, in this situation yeah yeah because yeah. initially you guys were going to pay for it we offer. We try. <laughs> right. And they we turned try. you down. Yeah. Now, if they say like two years from now, it's they're going to put it in on their own dime. Correct. Then you're going to move your thing. Correct. All right. So we can make that a condition of approval. Yes, the relocation of our DOT will will pay for it. Right. They're going to pay the right. half a million dollars, whatever it costs to put in the traffic light, right. which you don't have to pay. But now you got to reconfigure your site. Right. Okay. Yeah. That's good. So if they were willing to, we're going to change that. They must realign. Um, what else? So you think it's all, you think you're all set, right? I do. Okay. Is there anything else I had on here? Um, you got you got the Chamber of Commerce rates right there. That's a nice one. That's a good one. Um, I think that's it at this point. I mean, the, the big thing for me were the the lights, the noise, and moving the traffic signal. And you said yes to moving of, of the realigning traffic, the noise. Like we got an understanding from your guy um, on how that's going to work, <coughs> and then the lights—they're um, turned. They're basically turned off our security lights after nine o'clock. Uh, yes. Yeah. And I, you know, I think those are all items. You know, should an approval be issued for this? There'll obviously be conditions. We just just discussed one. We can just dis discuss conditions with staff so that <coughs> everything's buttoned up prior to. Right. Because like a BMW, the lights are off. 
someone goes on the property, lights turn on. Mm -hmm. That was the condition of approval, and that was, I think, their idea. Yeah, I, I was not involved in that, but I think I think Steve, Mr. Sauce, spoke to it elo eloquently, and I'm I'm confident that the final approval will reflect something that we all feel comfortable with. Okay, yeah. does that make sense to you guys? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Um, anything else we're missing? What? I, don't know just, I was going to say just a, yeah. so any, just a quick one for me, if I may. Jay, the uh, the arrows that I see at the new curb cut uh, mm -hmm. indicating right and left, mm -hmm. they will they actually appear on the pavement or not? That, yes, those will be on the pavement. They will, because okay. you have a you're you're got an arrow to the stop bar and you got an arrow to the double yellow, but nothing to that one. So I wanted to be sure that that will be the case. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so it says 12 inch wide white stop bar and stop sign. So we'll just make sure that arrows, those arrows are painted. Well, the, all the arrows on the, the queuing, are those painted? Yes, and we, we stripe our sites twice a year, I'm sorry. All, the, all those, yes. So everything that you see in here, because we want to make sure that people are pulling in and paying attention, we know they don't. So we're going to put all, all of our sites are currently arrowed out white and we do our sites twice a year, okay. unlike everyone else. So we want it to be bright and, and look fresh. So, okay. got it. Okay. Um, yeah, we don't have to do that because one of the things you said earlier is that that you know it's a local owner or whatnot, and yes, it's one hundred percent true. But these things do sell, right? And the local owner can easily sell it. Mm -hmm. But that's why in our approvals we have to make sure that if it gets sold, similar to like a dairy and sub storage. It goes mm -hmm. to Cube Smart that it doesn't go to red and green or something like that. Understood. And, and you know, maybe another condition of approval to help control mm -hmm. for that is, you know, whether it's prior to CO or whatever, you know, the operator has to register a point of contact. And if there ever is an issue, there's a specific person. And if there's a change in ownership, you know, that needs, needs to be updated accordingly. Okay. So, or if Steve retires and, you know, we need to find someone. He so. may, may or may not. <laughs> Why well, man still working? He's trying to retire two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> Would anybody in the general public like to speak to this obligation? <clears throat> Look at that crowd flying. We miss anything? No. Any reason why not to close? Okay, I look for a motion to close. Mike makes the motion. Looking for a second. George makes a second. All in favor? Hearings closed. Thank you for your Thanks, time. Thanks, everyone. Appreciate it. Appreciate your time. Thank you. <clears throat> I stay till nine so the kids don't go to sleep. You know how to clear a room. Look at this. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Yeah. Get rid of everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, it's taking good notes. All right, we're going to keep going, Jay, while you guys are wrapping up. Sorry, we'll get out of here. Don't worry about it. You're fine. Um, that's your end, Jay. We'll talk to Yeah, absolutely. Hey, Karen's going to come. Close one of the doors if you have to. Bring the hammer. <laughs> um, that's going to be the end of the, ge the public hearing tonight. Now we're going to go into the general into the general meeting. Um, first, we have deliberate some possible decisions on the following: special permit number 66M, site plan, coastal site plan review number 234B, floodstone prevention application number 447, also known as PL 24-64, Darien uh, YMC of Darien at 2420 Boston Post Road, proposal to replace and expand the existing concrete boat ramp and concrete dock foundation and provide and in pro and in proximate to Holly Pond and perform related site development activities within regulated areas. The hearing closed on July 30th, 2024. In your packets, we got a um, draft of the resolution. Any additional questions, comments, typos, scriveners are on this one? <coughs> No. I, I would just note that the uh, commission considered this uh, resolution last week and had several concerns relative to um, number one, the shed in the non-conforming location and proximity to the boat ramp. Number two, the importance of the YMCA adhering to the, the, the club's uh, previous special permit approvals. 
and uh, Jamie and, and maybe some others inquired uh, uh, regarding the dates relative to uh, the Army Corps of Engineer and Connecticut Deep approvals um, relative to uh, the discrepancy in, in, in the latest revised plans date. So um, we went back this week and made some of uh, made some updates based on uh, your comments last week, and I'll just go over those very quickly with you. Um, on page two of the resolution, number four and five, um, we we added for number four, the commission acknowledges that no changes are proposed by the YMCA to programmed activities or membership. However, the Commission finds that it is critically important for the YMCA to adhere to the specific conditions of, of the YMCA's previous special permit approvals relative to use activities and programming. And then number five, the Commission acknowledges that an existing short storage shed on the property in direct proximity to the boat ramp is in a non-conforming location relative to side yard accessory structure setbacks that apply to the R1 half residential zone. Um, and further, the necessary zoning and building permit for the shed was ne never sought by the YMCA. Um, and then number seven and eight on that same page, number two of the resolution, um, we just clarify that the approvals for Connecticut Deep and Army Corps were updated based on the applicable engineering plans last revised June 21st, to, uh, 2024. And then lastly, on page five of the resolution. Do you have a typo over there? Okay. Uh, number uh, letter G, the YMCA shall file for the necessary zoning and building permit for the relocation slash construction of the storage shed currently in direct proximity to the boat ramp in a new conforming location. Okay, and then is H, was H changed? Was that new? The reason why the typo in H is that boat ramp and residence. There's no residence. Yeah, you're correct. I, I don't believe that was changed um, okay. this week. That may have been a typo from last time around. We can certainly yeah, that's a plea through. We can certainly strike that. Prior to the request for a new boat ramp, and then want to say and shed. Well, to, the only thing is, do we want to change G to either say they shall file the necessary zoning permit for relocation or remove the shed? Right, because they might they might not want the shed, right? So they certainly they don't. don't have to, right, it makes it seem like they have to file another application for the shed. Mm -hmm. They could just say we don't want the shed. We're just going to tear it down. We didn't know we shouldn't put it here. Let's yeah. just nix it. Yeah. So I don't want to make it. I don't want to force them into applying for another permit for the shed if they don't really want it. R right. That I'll, I'll say I'll say that 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 was. Based on uh, it looks like they're going to do yeah, it. based on conversations with the folks at the YMCA that they're that if they're they, comfortable with they the do shed. plan on moving the shed yeah they definitely plan yeah. on it but to to um, to Adam's point maybe it's not yeah. movable maybe it's going to fall apart agreed yeah. agreed I we mean, can she, change that line when we were there she said they're def they definitely need it but yeah. we'll for some reason shed. it's twenty thousand dollars to move a shed they can't do it to, for a year or two right, right. we're not right. going to just let them sit there yeah. We'll say we'll remove it, something like that. Good point. Good comment. That, that's the only thing I noted on here. The further request approval for new boat ramp and the relocated shed, the applicant show. How about the relocated shed instead of residence? Uh, are you referring to H? Yes. So? Yeah. Uh, we can strike the resident, the but reference to the residence. There. I would say new boat ramp and the relocated shed. Something like that. Oh, this is just for the no, boat ramp. So, ramp. so we should we shouldn't even we should even reference the shed. Effect. The shed is a new application. Something else will do. No, but it's going to be in the same survey. It's the um, ASLO. The Army Corps and Connecticut yeah, but that's deep not approvals be required cover to approval for the boat ramp. For the boat ramp, well, they might well, have to file another survey. Get rid of the shed altogether. Yeah. But you have to do the shed before you do the boat ramp. Tear it down. It'll do the same. It'll do the same time. If they remove it, what are you going to show on the ASLO? That's true. That's not there. 
or relocated shed if necessary. You want to make sure, you, before you give them the C of O, yeah, yeah. you want to make sure the shed's moved up. Yep. Or torn down. Right. Following? Yeah. Okay, so we want to make that a condition is yeah. the shed shall be permitted or removed prior to the CO or certificate of completions. It's not a CO, it's a certificate of completion zoning compliance, right? So and, I think, and I think what Steve is saying is the as built should show, if they're going to move the shed, should show the removed shed. Now, the other thing with regard to the as build, mm -hmm. it, and I don't remember, in the application, did we get a survey of all seven acres or just a partial survey? I thought it was because a partial the, survey. Then I would just make it an as built partial survey. Because an as built survey means they have to do, do the all seven all acres. Partial. One, costs, one costs like 500 bucks, one costs like 5,000. <coughs> as built right. partial survey required. Yeah, because it says, it says, um, Survey shall show all utilities or buried infrastructure installed as part of this application and still include measurements from known so permanent structures. So change number two to be uh, partial survey. Yeah. Okay. And that it's, I mean, I, I, I'm sure the survey, because the whole thing was redone, I'm sure the survey is fine, but if they don't. Just showing the shed and yeah. the new boat ramp. Yeah, we don't need to have, you know. You don't need to see the, the front parking lot and right. all that stuff. You don't need to see utilities on the back side that's, you know, 200 yards away from this thing. Unless right. that's where they move the shed. <laughs> <laughs> True. <All right. laughs> they stick the shed up in there. You know. I think that's it. Okay. George, you good? Yes, sir. Got you guys. Okay. Um, I would look for a motion to approve the resolution as edited. Um, Adam makes a motion. Mike makes a second. All in favor? Or nothing. Okay. Okay, next item up for bid. I think we can get this under 15 minutes. Um, Landfill and regarding application number 562A is an apple, also known as PL24-104, Town of Darien, Great Island, Zero Great Island Road. Proposal to cap the previous orchard area with 12 inches of clean fill to remediate contaminated soil conditions and form related site development activities within a regulated area. The remediation will allow the 20,000 plus or minus square foot area to be used for passive recreation. <coughs> the 61.05 plus or minus acre subject property is located on the east side of Goodwives River Road and the Long and Long Neck Point Road and consists of a total of three separate lots identified, identified as map number 58 lots number 1-A 13.5 plus or minus acres map 58 lot dash 1 49.45.94 plus or minus acres and map number 58 lots 1 uh, AA 1.61 acres the access way in the R1 residential zone. This subject property is accessible via causeway at the southeast term southeastern terminus of Ringshead Road from Goodwives River Road. The hearing closed on September 3rd, 2024. In our packets we get everyone's good on this, right? Mm -hmm. In our packets, we got a draft resolution. Before you um, start, yep. the application number on the first line lists 562, not 562-A, PL24104. Thank you. We might want to amend that. Fantastic. Thank you. Did that happen like, whatever, nine months ago? Where we had the wrong header, and now it's like, the, I checked it, we religiously checked those things. Yeah, we just got to make sure we get everything right. We don't want to get sued over it, no doubt, Jay. <laughs> you never know. Um, anything, any other um, typos or scrivener's errors on this one? That's the only one I got. Correct. The only thing that I, I want to check on, and I didn't see it in here, was um, the timing of it. Because we asked him about 40 truckloads. He didn't really give us a timing because he was getting filled from this guy and that guy and some of the other guy. We just don't want this thing dragging out forever. And, he's, and he asked for a certain period of time, and then I like, basically doubled it. And I don't know what we said. Yeah, correct. He's, he, his, in, in conversations with, with the Director of Public Works, Ed Gentile, he's, he's looking to get the project done within about 30 days. Um, it may extend slightly beyond that, that time period, but he, he wants to stay within this 
a, a confined period of time. Yeah, I couldn't remember. Um, he said a month, and we said fine, do it right. two months. Yeah, he's, he's basically looking to get the the area capped and then uh, stabilized with with seed in late October. Uh, you know, by late October to to get the the seed and the grass to grow to stabilize the area. So right. and he wants to get um, the fill off the uh, elementary school oh, lot square in now. Yep. Yeah. Right. The the thing we were I mean I don't I don't really care much about throwing down grass so you, you can throw it that doesn't that's not a truckload. Um, but you want to just put a timing in there and get it done and get the truckload stuff done in sixty days. Within sixty days. Yeah. So it would be number. I guess. Uh, add something to number eight. Okay. Would say um, the, the the material to be used to be a great iron for roughly forty truckloads, which should take approximately thirty days, is what he said, right? Correct. So it would be the top of yes. page three. Yeah. That's the finding, which he said will take thirty days, and then later, if we put in. I had it. I wrote it down um, um, after E is an Edward. New condition F. Right. Put it someplace in there. You know, the truckload should be able to be delivered within a 60 day straight period, <coughs> two month period. Not like a, like, a, not like a month here and a month there. So within two months of the start of the project. Yeah, that makes sense. Agree? Should we. Say subject to extension request if yeah. necessary. That's a good idea. Good idea. Yeah, maybe something happens. Yeah, something mm -hmm. always happens. Because mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, what from what from what I understand about him, he's always looking for clean fill, and he doesn't want to buy yeah. it. It's you know some place in town will take from A to B. He's got a lot yeah. of stuff. He's got a lot of it's in the Yeah. Um, that's it. That's it for me. Mm, I'm sorry, what was that? It's just a typo on condition A, bottom of page three, which will correct. Yeah. Not a big deal. Thank you. Um, I would just note that when the commission deliberated on this application last week, um, there, was, there, there was some question as to whether additional testing may be necessary sometime into the future in another five years, 10 years, whatever that number or number of years yeah, would be. Put that in here. Um, what we put in here was, um, so under soil management uh, plan, page two, number two, um, we're talking about a maintenance component included as part of the management plan which addresses long-term maintenance for remediated areas. It's basi basically visual inspections that will be performed on a, on a periodic basis uh, and reported on with those reports being kept in uh, Department of Public Works. This does not require any additional soil testing within a five or 10 year period. What we did is we went back to um, uh, Joe Canis of Tie and Bond, uh, he provided a very brief staff report following the close of the public hearing uh, in which he notes that in most circumstances the soil coming in would not need to be tested if it is coming directly from the location where it was tested previously and has been shown to meet Connecticut Deep RSR criteria. If the material is being amended following the testing, then it should be tested again to determine if there are, are any uh, constituents of concern in the amended material. Um, and we did follow up with uh, the applicant, with uh, Ed Gentile regarding this. Um, the, the plan is for the soil to be tested in the location uh, from which it's being brought and there will be no mixing of that soil with any okay. additional material. Doesn't Canis's letter basically say if there's runoff in year six after one of these annual visual inspections, the new dirt they put in, they also have to test it off site first before they bring it in, right? Right. That's how I read his letter to me. Um, we can take a second look at that and clarify that in the resolution if need be. 
Um, or if you think it's... I don't think we need to, to worry about it. It's because that's part of the application and it's part of this plan. Okay. So I, I don't think we need to add that in, but that's kind of how I read it. It was like if they add new soil in six years from now, yeah. that soil has to be... They're going to test the soil today, right? Because it's right. The, the stuff that's going to be the base, but whatever. There's some hurricane blows through and knocks off some low line area and exposes the orange tarp thing. Then they got to test the soil. They got to test the fill that they're going to bring in to put on top of that as well. Yeah, yeah. Or whatever's. Whatever. Who knows what the standards will be? In yeah, 10 years. whatever. Or just, whatever it is. Or just, just you can put a line in any fill you shall conform to deep standards. Yeah. Be done with it. Yeah. yeah. Any future fill or something. Or just any fill. Any fill. Any fill. Yeah. Now, but the, the, I think one of the question was, and, and I, I get it because people explained it to us a bunch of different times. We were worried about if this stuff ever rises to the top. But it's, it yeah. doesn't. It's, it's, they said it was yeah. heavy as yeah. heavy as old. Yeah. yeah, testimony was entered into the record during the public hearing by by Mr. Gentile regarding that issue. I think he noted that um, be, because it is a heavy metal, it, it doesn't it doesn't move in the soil. It doesn't come up. It doesn't go down. It, uh, there, it it's not affected by runoff. Doesn't go left, doesn't go right. How did it even get there? Do we know? The orchard, uh, orchard, it's fertilizer. Orchard. Oh, fertilizer. It's fertilizer. Fertilizer. It's fertilizer. Okay. So I think we could. So we're we're gonna have annual inspection, but we're not doing any evasive testing. Correct. Okay. Everyone's fine with that. Yeah. Okay. Good. Mm -hmm. All right. With that said, um, we made a couple of I think changes and typos in this thing, right? Do we need to cut my names? Uh, but look for a motion to approve as amended. Adam makes a motion. George sure. makes a second. All in favor? For nothing. Bingo. Done. All right. Next item up for bid is um, business site plan application number 33-I, special permit, um, yeah, special permit, also known as PL 24-112, Darren Art Center at 537 Post Road, LLC, at 537 Boston Post Road. Proposed to establish a new 1,836 plus or minus square foot dance studio operated by the Darien Art Center within the first floor of, the of space formerly occupied by Complete Angler. The 1.36 acre pl plus or minus acre subject property is located on the northwest side of Boston Post Road, approximately 560 feet northeast of its intersection with Brookside Road, as shown by specimen map number 14. As lot 36 in the design business DB zone. The hearing closed on September 3rd, 2024. In our packets, we got a um, a draft resolution. Um, I found one typo, I think, in it. Um, did anybody else find any typos, corrections, scriveners, errors in this one? The only typo that I found was on page four. Um, Finding number, or I guess, uh, resolution number E, it's stager classes. Just take out the R. Uh, I'm sorry, say that again. Number four on E, on page four. Stage. Stager? Yeah. Stage. 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 Stage class. Stagger. 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 Yes, thank you. Okay. And then to be consistent, maybe you want to put a space between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m., seven days a week. The other is probably a space between the 9 and the a.m. Yeah. Um, this one's pretty straightforward, too. Any questions, comments on this one? Um, I honestly don't recall seeing it. You got it. It was emailed to you on Monday. Oh, mm -hmm. was it? Okay. Well, then I'm sure it's fine. You guys can read it. Yeah, we got he, the email on Friday and Thursday said it's yeah, going to come on Monday. Monday. Then it came Monday. Yes, okay. Uh, there's no service required. Yeah, I had no issues with it. I'm sure this is on. All good. Fantastic. Okay. With that said, looking for a motion to approve as edited. Adam makes a motion. Mike makes a second. All in favor? For nothing. Resolution passes. You got your new, the, the top Darren Art Center people, they got their new um, dance studio your for the little kids. You got a little sister? Uh, older sister. 
So you probably were saying the old days too. Yeah. Um, chairman's report, the only chairman's report we have is this Friday, Friday the 13th, is Friday Night Lights at Darren High School football game. We should be very proud of ourselves because we approved the lights like 10 years ago. Um, that's it for me. Um, director's report, anything special? Uh, nothing new. Nothing new? I would just say that we have successfully scheduled the consultant consultant interviews for uh, the 17th in the Mather Center. So uh, we've, oh, yeah, we've, yep. we've scheduled uh, 45 minute slots for each of the each of the three consultants, um, and we'll see how we'll see how it goes that night. Mm -hmm. well, is there one other application on that meeting or no? I think it's the Stefanoni yeah. application will be on for next week. Yeah. You're recused on that one? On the, sev on the sev uh, 17th, the special the meeting. Okay. Right. And then we're going to try to get two draft resolutions on, one for the Chocolatier, which you heard last week, and the other for 25 Greenleaf. What was 25 Greenleaf? Uh, the sport court. Oh, yeah. Um, Regrading. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to email you the uh, three proposals from the applicants. That will go out to you Thursday uh, okay. for that, the RFP for the town plan. Is that different than what we already got? You might have seen them already. Mm. Do you want to email them back up? We can we can email them a second time, but but it's the same thing. Right? Same, same thing. Yeah. yeah. Same thing. Yeah. 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 Correct. Yeah. 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 Mine's buried. I think it went to my town hall one. Send it to work. It's better. Yeah. We can. Send it to work. Okay. Yeah. We can. Uh, so this, the upcoming meetings are September seventeenth. That's a special meeting with the three consultants for the town planning conservation development. Yep. Yeah. Um, the 57 White Street application. Correct. And then two resolutions. September 24th, anything special? Uh, as Fred mentioned last week, it's six what we expect to be fairly minor public hearings, I think. Yeah, that's correct. Quote you on that. You never know. That's <laughs> why we have the yeah, hearings. Right. <laughs> we also fast tracked one, um, the, the 117 ADU yeah. um, and got them on the agenda for that. Um, that night as well, so we'll move that process along for the applicant relative to the to the proposed regrading that's going to happen. For the draft, okay. Um, and then, any other business? No. Looks so like we can take a motion to enter motion to close. <coughs> uh, yes, may I? Uh, George makes right. the motion. Looking for a second. Mike makes a second. Hearing's closed. Thank you, TV 79.